Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. With me today, I have a special guest, uh, Dave McCleary. He's been involved with uh, his passion. Actually, this is uh, eliminating slavery and human trafficking. Uh, Dave, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me today. It's quite an honor. My pleasure. Uh, great seeing you, by the way, uh, in Tucson. Glad we got to cross paths there. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Atlanta. Not many of us around, but we, I was born and raised here. I have two adult daughters now. One just got married over the summer and a wife here in Atlanta, a uh, small business owner. Been, a, uh, been in business about 21 years here in Atlanta. Nice. What kind of business is that? We do commercial maintenance of commercial buildings uh, around Atlanta. Got it. Okay, great. Now, how about Rotary? How did you get involved with Rotary? Yeah, so many years ago, I've been involved in the community for some time, but I wanted to get really more involved in the community. And I had a neighbor that was a member of the Roswell Rotary Club here in uh, Roswell, Georgia. And I, I went in it, and uh, I just became very uh, impacted by the organization, learned more about it, and joined about 21 years ago. And I've absolutely loved uh, Rotary. The one thing I'll say, too, is that you, know, you always wonder how you can help. But with Rotary, there's always an avenue to help. And so I, I love being part of this amazing organization. Great. Um, so you, um, I saw in your credentials you're a past president also of your club? Correct. I was president in 2011-12. Uh, okay. Okay, good, good. And uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, pin you're wearing, by the way. Uh, we have matching pins there, but it'd be nice for the audience to know what, you, what that's for. Well, it's quite an honor. It's a service above self uh, pin. I think they award 150 a year globally, and it was uh, for the work uh, that I've been doing as it relates to modern-day slavery and human trafficking. Great. Outstanding. So um, with that one, tell us how you got involved with uh, human trafficking. What was, uh, I would say, the trigger that got you in, involved with this one to move forward with it? Yeah, so it was one of those things I never really thought about human trafficking. I never really thought about really anything to do with this issue. But I was a volunteer at a youth conference in Atlanta in 2012 when I was president of my Rotary Club. And the whole conference was focused on human trafficking. 60,000 youth uh, from around the United States were at this conference. And I remember thinking at the time that this just does not happen in my community. This is somebody else's problem. Well, through that, uh, through that conference, I met a girl named Melissa through the CNN Freedom Project. And it turned and I had Melissa come speak to my Rotary Club when I was president. After the meeting, one of our members gave Melissa a big hug. She had been trafficked for two years in downtown Atlanta and was finally rescued. One of our members gave Melissa a big hug. I said, how did you know her? He said, she used to babysit my kids when she was 12. Wow. Then I realized it wasn't somebody else's problem. And with Rotary on the verge of eradicating polio, I thought this is a perfect issue for us to take on because we're in 200 countries. And so I began the initiative uh, mid-year in my presidency at Rotary. Nice, and you've been at it ever since. It sounds like this is your number one current passion for Rotary, so uh, great job with it that is. one. Uh, and I, we've gained a lot of momentum, but it's definitely seen Rotary make a big difference on this issue. How uh, widespread is this issue, this challenge? Because a lot of people just do not believe it's in their backyard or in their own area. That's right. It's, all, it's in every community in the world. I live in Georgia. And we have the second most counties in the United States. We have 159 counties, 141 counties reported trafficking last year. This is really the one issue that literally is in every community in the world. And that's why with Rotary in 200 uh, countries, uh, it just makes, it makes uh, sense for us to take this on. I'll just add one other thing too. It's estimated that 44 million people are enslaved around the world. And that Melissa's story, that personal story is what made it real for me. And we call it the power of one. And we, if we do that in Rotary in each community around the world, the difference we can make is enormous. Great. Now, um, with you, you sent us some videos. We'd like to see one of the videos, at least right now, the one that you had. I believe this is from Atlanta in 2017 at the RI convention. That's right. So this, this video was uh, taken at the Atlanta convention. We were actually uh, a big part of the, I was in the host committee, and a big part of the convention was a human trafficking. We had Ashton Kutcher and Senator Corcoran, Gary Haugen, and, and Rebecca Benda on the main stage. But we did this candlelight vigil to open it up on Saturday, and we were expecting just a few thousand people. We had over, over 12,000 wow. people there with John German in the audience, and it had a really big impact on Rotary. Great. So uh, let's take a look at this video. Got a chance. Thank you. 
And what we're getting ready to do now is make history. Human trafficking must end. Now, how do we bring the invisible into the visible? Tonight, we're going to stand on the shoulders of survivors. And when community gets together for one purpose, we can change the world. I was sold to human trafficking, scared, desperate 11-year-old child. Victims of human trafficking all around the world are voiceless. The power of one, we are the power of one. And tonight, we will move and respond to make a mark that will never be erased to stop human trafficking. Coming back, uh, there again, uh, great outstanding video. Thank you very much for sharing that one. That was actually from the Atlanta Convention 2017, which I believe I was one of the participants out in that audience. So tell us, uh, Dave, how people, how Rodeo is going to get involved with this and how those people that we saw there could take action. Yeah, so as Global Chair of the Rotary Action Group of Slavery, we, we actually have members in 60 countries. And we just see Rotary as 1.2 million Rotarians, an army of 1.2 million people around the world in 200 countries, 34,000 clubs taking this issue on the community. And just one, a couple real quick stories about the video. The idea of that video came from that conference in 2012 when the youth did a video in downtown Atlanta. And I know when I was on the host committee of the Atlanta Convention, I thought, what a great opportunity to showcase this cause at the convention. And then another story about that video, the two, there were two girls that were singing, in the, or actually a mother and daughter that were singing in the video. Right after that uh, was shot, the, 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 uh, the mother was trafficked, and uh, the, the trafficker of the mother got out of prison and threatened to kidnap the daughter. Well, we reached out to our Rotary partners in Florida and they revoked the person's parole in two days, which actually helped save our life. So that's the impact that Rotary can have. Wow, outstanding. So you're seeing it basically in numbers, having the connection within these communities will make a huge difference and a huge impact. That's great. That's right. We're in every, and one quick story, because I think it's important just to just show the reach of Rotary. I received a WhatsApp message from our coordinator, Quito, Ecuador, about two months ago that received a message from a friend of hers in Argentina that had received a message from a mom she knew in Mexico that daughter had been kidnapped for two months and didn't know what to do. So we reached out to our partners, A21 in Mexico, and they rescued the girl in 24 hours. And that's the impact Rotary can have on, on this issue. Outstanding. Now, you also had uh, one other video you wanted us to take a look at and share. So um, with that, um, you want to tell us a little bit about this before we go into the video? Yeah, we produced it, kind of the story of, of Rotary and how we uh, got involved in the issue and, and the impact we've had uh, really across all spectrums on both sides of the aisle politically, uh, uh, as far as uh, business leaders and just kind of how we got involved in the issue. Right. Okay, um, if you wouldn't mind then, let's go ahead and cut to the video and see what it looks like. Thank you. With more than 20 million victims of human trafficking around the world, we've got a lot more to do. I want to make it clear today that my administration will focus on ending the absolutely horrific practice of human trafficking. Children do not wake up and say, hey, I want to sell my body. They're put into situations. At 11 years old, my neighbor crumbled up $20 and placed it in my hand, and he began to have sex with me. And then he passed me to his brother, and they passed me to their father. Before you knew it, half of the community was sleeping with a hungry, scared, desperate 11-year-old child. There are actually more people in slavery today in our world than in any other time in human history. There really are just three things you need to know about modern day slavery. First of all, that it is more vast than ever. Second, that it is just as brutal as ever. But thirdly, it is more stoppable than ever. Rotary is one of the greatest, most powerful philanthropic organizations on the planet. A million plus 
people linked into Rotary around the world. And Rotary cares about lifting the last and least of these on planet Earth. You bring together a, a global network of volunteers who dedicate their time and, the, and your talent to take on the world's most pressing humanitarian challenges. And look where the world once was in its fight against polio. But Rotarians changed everything. You sounded the alarm. You woke up the world. And in partnership, you raised more than a billion dollars to make sure that everyone could get the vaccine. I saw the possibility of an organization that spans continents and began to take on this idea that we could end slavery in this generation. I come to you today as a proud Rotarian. I was a president of my Rotary Club of Roswell in 2012. And I went to a conference in Atlanta, Georgia, and the entire conference was focused on modern day slavery and human trafficking. In, in a gathering where we were telling the story of a young woman who had been rescued, restored out of human trafficking, out of sexual servitude, a volunteer, a door holder named Dave McClary, a business owner in our town standing there, did not know, was not aware that this was happening in the world. But Dave McClary was moved, his heart was pierced, and Dave McClary had a path. His path was called Rotary. And to be honest with you, I didn't think that happened in my community. Well, I heard so many stories of girls that had been trafficked across the globe. But I met a girl named Melissa from my uh, hometown of Roswell that was trafficked. Turns out that she used to babysit one of our members' kids from our club when she was 12 years old. And I could not believe that. And the issue is so overwhelming, I, I couldn't really understand how we grapple it how we attack this issue. Rotary has eradicated, pol about to eradicate polio globally. So we have the example of how Rotary can take an issue on like this. And so I just thought, why not human trafficking? And today, I believe Rotary is uniquely positioned once again to change everything. For the first time in human history, there is a generation alive that could bring an end to slavery as a force in human affairs. In thousands of years, this has never been possible before, but now, on your patch of history, it is possible. This is an issue that affects every community in the entire world, and I realize with our six areas of focus how human traffic affects so many of those areas, and with Rotary in 120 countries, 1.2 million Rotarians and 34,000 clubs globally. I know it can be done. We are doing away with the idea that human trafficking is something that doesn't happen anymore or that only happens somewhere else. It is here and it is now and it is everyone's responsibility to recognize that. Human trafficking must end. Now, Rotary, what's the story we're going to tell our grandkids one day? We can tell them the story about eradicating polio. Now imagine 20, 30 years from now if we can tell them about eradicating the issue of modern-day slavery and human trafficking. Rotary, this is our time. With the power of one in every community, Rotary clubs can truly eradicate modern-day slavery. Well, uh, that was a very powerful video. Thank you very much for sharing that, Dave. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, the human trafficking component of that. Of course, I don't want to downplay that one, but we also have uh, some of the other ones you were talking about. That is the uh, modern day slavery. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the other uh, points that you're looking at besides just the human trafficking component? Yeah, so we encompass all forms of slavery around the globe. Uh, forced labor is a huge, uh, particularly in uh, not in the states, but in many other countries, that's the primarily the area of slavery that's happening is forced labor. We work quite closely with that. We work also with corporations on supply chain to make sure that they check their supply chain, that they're not using uh, slave labor in the supply chain. We work on issues as it relates to labor, tra I mean, sorry, is, uh, organ trafficking. Um, so all forms of slavery we work on as an organization, depending on what area that we are in. Uh, but we feel that, uh, again, labor is a huge component of that as well. 
So um, in, in looking at that and doing so, how do you um, focus or target in specifically on identifying the challenges of, uh, say, for example, uh, slave labor, things like that that we're seeing currently? Yeah, so we have some pretty amazing partners around the world. International Justice Mission, which Gary Howe, you saw in the video, uh, helps us target those areas. Uh, we work with another organization called Hope for Justice. We work quite closely with the UN as well to look at areas that are that are having uh, increase in, in uh, forced labor. And we look to our Rotary Clubs to take that on because the great thing about Rotary is we have the leaders in those clubs that can actually help go to governments to help uh, facilitate some of the uh, potential rescues uh, as also uh, support safe homes once the girls are, uh, or uh, people, girls and boys, men and, men and women are being rescued out of that. And how widespread is the issues? I, I know we talked about it globally, but uh, I know even in community specific, um, we've had and seen issues and challenges of people being paid unfairly for the work that they're doing, basically being enslaved. That's right. It's happening all over, uh, particularly you know, during COVID. We've seen a dramatic increase in, in slavery around the world. And so we, uh, we work with organizations to make sure that uh, if someone is being paid unfairly, we can help intervene. And because, as you know, Rotary has the leaders in our club. Uh, a lot of times we have government leaders. We have uh, educators, law enforcement. Uh, business leaders all in our clubs that can actually help facilitate to help not only spread the word but help uh, help bring an end to it. Now as an individual, rot Rotary or Rotarian or not, how would somebody identify say something that was going on possibly that you wouldn't otherwise notice? Yeah, so we have a toolkit on our website uh, www.ragass.online that helps uh, gives points on how to identify it. But for instance, in sex trafficking, uh, if if someone, uh, I've been told by investigators that if you see a girl that, that won't make eye contact, um, a lot of times they can potentially be trafficked. Um, they may have a tattoo with a mark of someone's name on it that's actually their property. Uh, in, in some cases, uh, they may be uh, homeless uh, and, and that they make them more vulnerable to being trafficked. And what would somebody do um, if that were the case, if they, say, suspected this was, was happening? There are a couple of things in, in the North America, so Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. is a, what we call, there's a Polaris hotline, which is a 1-888-188 number that you can call to uh, identify trafficking victims. And again, on our website, we have a list of all the hotlines around the globe. Unfortunately, it's not a global hotline, I wish it was, but uh, we do have several hotlines in, in communities around the world, and we have that listed on our website. And then the other thing too, if it's a, the other thing that we do, we work really closely with law enforcement uh, to help uh, make sure they get trained in the issue of human trafficking. As you know, in Rotary, we have, a lot of times we have the police chiefs or the head of the law enforcement in our community. We ask them to train their police. So a lot of times if, if you see a sign and you can call the police, they know what to do about it. You know, five, six years ago, they wouldn't have known that, but Rotary's really helped spread uh, training law enforcement around the world. Outstanding. Now, would that training also be uh, extended down to Rotarians or community members? That's correct. We, uh, we have different, different programs to train Rotarians on how to spot the signs, and because we are global, we customize it to depend on the area that you're in. And, and just I'll add one other thing, too, that we've really been focused on education prevention in the, in the last uh, few years. And so we have a whole plan around educating Rotarians, educating the public, and also educating within the school system. And I'll just add one more thing too, because we are non-political, non-religious. It's pretty easy for us to get in a school system. If so, we get the curriculum, we can get in a school system. Matter of fact, we just received the largest grant from your zone actually in California, Sacramento for human trafficking, a $215,000 grant that educated 33,000 students and 10,000 teachers in Sacramento. So we're taking that model across the world. We're getting ready to launch it in Mexico now. Uh, so that, that educates in school, but also is able to educate Rotarians about the issue. Great, um, now IMPACTS, uh, you've been doing it for just about 10 years now. 
What have you seen as the changes? Have you seen um, impact in the work that you've done? Uh, is it something that's promising or is it something that we are just scratching the surface of? No, it's very promising. I'm, I'm really excited to see the momentum we've had. I mean, I, I, there's thousands of stories, but um, give you just a couple quick examples. Uh, the In Modern Slavery Act was before the U.S. Senate. Senator Corker, who was part of the Atlanta Convention, put that forward. And it was a big piece of legislation because it's a $1.2 billion fund to help uh, trafficking around the world. And uh, they were having a little trouble getting it passed in the Senate. So we uh, activated, I was on the steering committee with Senator Corker, and we activated our network. We were able to get 13 senators on both sides of the aisle to co-sponsor the legislation. And another thing I'll say about the sphere of influence, there's a, a club in South Georgia that uh, started a human trafficking committee. One of the owners of the uh, McDonald's franchise was in that committee. He printed the Polaris hotline on the paper tray liners. They rescued five girls in a month and a half. And so that's Rotary's network. We, we have big influences in our sphere of the in area. Outstanding. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Rotary Action Group uh, against human slavery. Um, a lot of people, the viewers, probably have not heard of a Rotary Action Group. So tell us about that organization. Yeah, that's right. So Action Groups, a lot of Rotarians don't even know what Action Groups are. Uh, so that's another thing we're trying to uh, change. Uh, but uh, so the Action Group, uh, as you know, polio is their number one area that we focus on for many years. So Rotary started Action Groups many years ago. There's 27 Action Groups. Uh, across the world, and um, so the uh, one on slavery that I'm chair of was founded in 2013, or sanctioned officially by Rotary in 2013. And we've grown to uh, members on 62 countries uh, through that period. Through that time, we've got board members on six different continents, and we have 27 coordinators uh, from around the globe. It touches almost every continent in the world. So it's really uh, amazing too the reach that we have because a lot of times we'll give you an example we are working on a large grant in uganda with hope for justice to free an entire community it'll be a revolutionary uh, opportunity and I, I received a random call from the madison rotary club about the action group because they saw us on a virtual event we did want to know how they can engage i told them about this uh, about this issue they're i think the fifth or sixth largest club in the world and they said they would been they had been looking to do a grant in Africa, but couldn't find one. And then we connected them with our grant in Uganda, and now they're going to partner with us to to work on that grant. Outstanding. And how did you locate that uh, specific uh, area? Well, we were looking at a, a uh, scale, a large scale grant that Rotary offers, and we decided to push that back a year because the reason we did that is because of Hope for Justice, our partner. Uh, had been doing some amazing work, already had a program sort of in place, and uh, we had the Rotary Connections in, there that are doing incredible work in, in Uganda. The other thing, too, is we've got connections within the government, which always helps in some of these countries, particularly when you're doing a, a large grant. And so that's why we identified uh, Uganda, because we think we can scale it not just to that region, but around the world. Outstanding. Now, um, a lot of clubs, uh, they'll do maybe 10% of, uh, at the most of their work internationally. How would somebody, a Rotary Club, for example, start this program in their community? Yes, yeah, so for me, when we initially got started, we had a community event. And uh, we were, again, we didn't really know what we were doing in 2012. Uh, so we had an event expecting, you know, 25, 30 people. We had 450 people from the community show up. Uh, with very little advertising, actually. And what I'll say about this event, too, is that we draw people outside Rotary. We did a, 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 a virtual summit in January. We had over 500 people in attendance, and over 35% of them were non-Rotarians that were attending the event, so they learned the story about Rotary. So there's, uh, again, we have a resource center on our website. But there are many ways you can get involved in your community. You can help uh, with a safe home that may be there. You can help, like we, my club recently trained, like I mentioned, trained law enforcement. And we had nine different departments that we were trained. But see, we brought in uh, the food and we're building a relationship with the law enforcement in that community. Uh, we, we, we do education prevention in the school system. 
and we hold, host community events that uh, raise awareness, but then also uh, we usually, we always have a call to action. As you know, you go to a seminar and there's no call to action. It's kind of a, a little bit of a waste of time. So we always make sure there's at least three call to actions at every uh, event that we host. Great. And uh, once again, if you wouldn't mind sharing the uh, websites or a way to contact you um, to get involved. Yeah, so it's uh, www dot ragas r a g a s dot dot online okay and my my email is d a v e at end h t now dot com thank you very much and um, in doing so then what would you say you have as far as tools for them for public awareness yeah so we have a toolkit that we're uh, finalizing now we've got a draft up on the website but we'll have it finalized by the end of December and it lists all sorts of resources uh, as it relates to uh, to modern slavery and human trafficking uh, it touches on all fields one one thing I didn't mention is we work quite closely I'm on the steering committee with the top um, the, the top medical fields and personnel in the United States and you wonder why I'm, I'm not a I'm not a doctor, but they wanted Rotary to be part of it because we can, they've gotten the material to train hospitals. And so what we've been doing is reaching out to, uh, to the different uh, administrators like Wellstar and some of the uh, Dignity Healthcare and some of the large healthcare organizations to train their, and to train their hospitals because we, in most cases, they're in our Rotary clubs. And so it makes sense. The other thing too, we worked with uh, the Jones Day Law Firm to create a companion of laws in 129 countries and 50 states, which will be launched on our website. And we have partners that will be seeing Rotary on our website, uh, like J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo, uh, several other major corporations that they'll learn about Rotary. And, just, and the other thing I'll mention, too, is they were excited that we were partnering with Jones Day because they have so, so much respect for Rotary. It's amazing how we have been able to open doors that other people have not been able to. That's outstanding. Well, Dave, thank you very much for all the hard work you're doing. Um, that's outstanding. Uh, I'm sure many people never realized how far and wide this problem and issue has been. So bringing awareness to it is something, again, through Rotary especially. I think we can make some huge changes around the world. So with that, thank you very much for uh, your Thank participation you. for sharing your story with us I, again outstanding and keep up the good work we hope to see you very soon all right sounds good thank Great. you thank you right. and with that everybody thank you very much for joining us um, for this one it's hopefully uh, something that you may want to take a look at and jump into uh, and accept the challenge of ending this uh, human traffic and slavery with that we will see you next time everybody please stay well and stay safe <laughs>